Hello there, this is Chatterbox, and on this channel I've programmed in quite a few different programming languages, but today I'm going to try something very different. You see, all of these programming languages that I've used feature something called garbage collection, which means that they essentially have this thing running in the background that rummages through the memory of your program and yeets all the objects that aren't needed anymore to free up memory. Now this is great, because it means I can basically program as badly as I want without major repercussions like memory leaks, but garbage collection also comes with its own cost, being performance. And unfortunately, there isn't really a way to solve the problem of garbage collection sapping your performance, other than switching to a programming language without it. But doing that means that you have to manage your own memory, which makes programming in that language quite a bit harder. But that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm switching to C++, a language I have basically no experience with whatsoever, and I'm going to try and make a game without using up all of my RAM. I already know what library I'm going to use as a base. It's called Raylib, and... Wait, why are you booing me? I know I've used it for three videos in a row at this point, but that's because I know it works, and I'm learning C++ here, not graphics programming. Anyway, Raylib handles a lot of the under the hood things, like rendering textures, so I don't need to program that. Another little restriction that I'm going to set myself is that I can't use any other libraries other than Raylib because having other people do all the work for me doesn't seem very good if I'm going to be learning a programming language. I installed everything I needed to compile C++ on Windows, which ended up being this program called MinGW. From there, I needed to figure out how to import Raylib into my C++ program. Conveniently, an epic guy called Baji was like, Don't worry bro, I got you. And he had a tutorial on that exact thing, so I'll link that in the description. I did do something a bit stupid here though. I accidentally imported the main C version of Raylib instead of a more object-oriented C++ binding. But you can use C code in C++, so it wasn't really that bad. After I had Raylib imported, it was time to start actually programming. But there was a problem. I didn't actually know what game I wanted to make. So I spent a little bit doing other things, and I found a nice space shooter asset pack that I liked. So I decided to work on a little arcade space shooter. I reopened VS Code and got to work. Now, I was in a bit of a weird situation going into this challenge, because I already kinda know what to do, due to experience with other similar-ish programming languages like C Sharp and also just picking up bits and pieces from books and YouTube videos and just talking to other people. But I've never actually worked on anything in C++. Now this meant that the basic implementation was quite easy, and within about 20 minutes I'd figured out how to load a texture, and I also had a basic background showing in a window. But all of my logic was being executed in the main function, and I wasn't actually using any C++ features just C, which isn't really making a game in C++, it's just making a game in C. So at this point, I decided that I should break out all my logic into classes, and while I was at it, why not make a basic game object system to make my life easier? It should be a piece of cake. I. Was. Wrong. Now, this is where the errors started. For some reason, nothing worked, and I got a ton of errors with everything I tried. After a while of frantically trying everything I could think of, I even reached out to Baji to ask for help, and he actually basically suggested the exact solution. But I was too stupid to realise it. This insanity continued for 13 whole hours, until I found out that I needed to include all of my scripts in my make file, which is a file that contains the build instructions for your program. And after that, everything worked. Great. What an incredible use of time that I'm not at all annoyed about. Now, since this video is about programming C++, I think I should go into a bit more detail about my game object system. I have an abstract class that contains two virtual functions, update and render, which should be pretty self-explanatory. And everything's designed to inherit from this class. In the constructor, I add a reference to the object to a vector, which I can then loop over in the main loop to trigger every update function and every render function of every game object. But hey, now I had a nice class-based system for adding entities and logic into the game. From that, I worked on re-implementing the background as a game entity, and it worked pretty well, even if it took me a little bit to figure out how to make the texture repeat. Do you want to know what I spent all day programming? This. A static image. Kill me. From there, I could set to work on the player logic, 
which is pretty simple, just getting input and using that to move up and down. But there still isn't much gameplay, especially for a space shooter. We need something to shoot. That's lucky, because the space shooter pack I used came with a few enemy sprites. So I made an enemy class that can be one of three random enemies, all using the same logic, just with different parameters. But I can't fight these enemies yet, because there's no way to actually spawn them. So I also made an enemy spawner that spawns an enemy every second or two. However, we have a problem. It seems that every now and then, when an enemy despawns, the game just randomly crashes. Now, I wasn't sure what was causing this, but I had a slight idea that it could be my method of keeping track of all the enemies. At this point, I was storing a reference or pointer for my enemies in a data structure C++ calls a vector, which I thought was the C++ equivalent of a list from C Sharp. And while I wasn't entirely wrong, as it can store a list of enemies, C++ has a data structure called a list, which suits my needs much better. After switching out vector for list throughout my code, everything worked seamlessly, and it didn't crash. Yay! At this point, I took a little break from programming to make a shooting sound effect. Pew! But then I came right back to it, to write a little music player for the music that came with the asset pack. Now we just need a way to shoot the enemies. So I made it that when the player presses the spacebar, it'll instantiate a bullet class, which is simply a box with a sprite that moves forward from the player's position. And with that, we almost had a complete game. Almost. You see, the last part of the game is actually something I delayed for a while, because it meant that I had to work on collision, and my ability to program collision systems is even worse than my will to resist buying all of the skittles in the local co-op with the revenue from my games. So instead of carefully thinking of a plan, I rushed straight into making the system. For some reason, my idea was to have two global lists and to iterate through every member in those lists every frame to check if they're colliding. Which isn't actually too bad of a system, even if it is a little unoptimized. The problem came, however, through the use of global variables. Now, global variables are usually a huge no-no in any type of programming. And in C++, it seems to mess you up pretty hard because of these little things called headers. In a header file, you define all your functions, variables, and what other files and libraries you need to include, ready to implement based on that in your own C++ files. But by including headers that include other headers, you accidentally include a load of classes that you don't really want. Which is why putting these lists into the global file that is included everywhere was a really bad idea, and doing that caused me a load of errors. Fortunately, I came to my senses and moved these global lists of collision objects out into their own separate file. But I was still stuck with the header issue, just on a bit of a lesser scale this time. I got kinda lucky when I stumbled across the term forward declaration, which allows you to use classes without specifically including them, instead meaning that they can be defined later. And this conveniently solves basically every problem I have. I quickly reworked my system to use that, and breathed a sigh of relief when everything compiled. So, that's my first ever project with C++ completed, and I think that this is my best result of making a game without a game engine so far. I think I might keep working with C++ every now and then, but with that, what are my impressions of the language? I really like its syntax and how it generally approaches things, but I don't really like the way that headers are handled, and the standard library is kinda confusing at times. I didn't actually have any memory problems that I'm aware of, so that's good. I've also heard that people often struggle getting their head around pointers, but I really didn't have that problem. So yeah, if you have a bit of time and you've never worked with C++, you should give it a little go because it's quite fun. So yeah, if you've liked this video, like it, and if you want to see more, subscribe. Another way to support me is buy my game Propulsion on Steam. It's like buying merch, but it's not a really low quality t-shirt with a bad logo stamped on it. You can also join my Discord to partake in the fun things we do there. And with that, that's the video done. I hope you have a very nice day, and goodbye.